Hi and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I do this hair in graphite pencil. As always I begin with a thorough sketch of my subject, in this case my hair. Do not underestimate the importance of having a good sketch in place. Don't rush it, spend time on getting the proportions right, otherwise you'll be dealing with all the things that are kind of off while you're adding the shadows and it's going to be a huge mess trying to erase what you've already done and correcting the sketch maybe you've already done the background and you have to work with that as well so spend your time on making a good sketch To begin with, I shaded in the background with graphite powder and a soft tool from Pan Pastel. You can achieve the same effect by shading in with a pencil, but I feel like graphite powder saves me a lot of time and also I really enjoy the smooth look it has. However, it can only go so dark, so later on I'll add in some deeper values with a 4B pencil. When I'm drawing the eye, I start out by outlining the darkest areas such as the borders around the eyes where the eyelids are and the pupil itself while trying to keep the highlights that I want white, white for now. Um, you can erase graphite to a certain point, but if an area has gotten too dark it's not always you can get all the pigment out of the paper, so I prefer to work around my white areas and then slowly detail them in. Once I begin to draw the reflection and highlights in the eye, I look at what is actually reflected in the hair's eye. In this case, there were some trees and also a few clouds. Instead of just making the highlight white, I'll add in some details and some abstract shapes that sort of resembles these trees and clouds that are distorted. This way you will avoid your highlight looking flat and this will also bring more focus and dimension into the eye of your subject. There are many ways in which you can blend graphite. You can use tissue paper, you can use cotton buds, um, a soft tool like I have here, blending stumps, brushes and etc. They're all great for different effects and different areas. For instance, I find that tissue paper or the soft tools can be great for blending larger areas out softly, while blending stumps blend more harshly but also more accurate. Um, and brushes, they are great for just a touch of softness. For instance, I like to use it over the last layer of pencil I've done on fur. When you're trying to draw realistically, contrast is your best friend. Contrast will make your drawing pop and appear more realistic. It can be very scary as a beginner to go with the darker values in your drawing, but it really is a game changer. If you feel like your drawings are missing something, try going over your values and seeing if your darks are dark enough and if your light areas are light enough. You can also try to take a picture of your drawing and then play with it um, where you play with the contrast in a photo editor on your phone. If you like it with more contrast, then go ahead and add more contrast in your drawing. When drawing the fur, focus more on the direction and shape and length of the hair rather than drawing every single strand of fur. Build up many layers to make the fur look dense and shiny rather than a lot of scribbly lines. Alternate between drawing fur, blending and erasing for highlights, at least that's what I do and that will help you make the fur look really dense and compact. The Tombow Mono Eraser works really great for adding finely detailed highlights, such as in the fur. And also remember that every part of your drawing is important. 
Even though you feel like you'd rather be focusing more on making the eye just perfect or the nose, remember to spend just as much time on other parts of your drawing, say the ears. If you skip some parts of your drawing, your drawing is going to feel flat and incomplete when you look at the total piece together. Even though you may not look as much as the, at the ears as the eyes, it will stand out if they look uncompleted. And just to add dimension, I'm drawing the fur on the back just barely out of focus. And I'm doing this by drawing bigger clumps of fur and blending out. I'm using the side of the pencil rather than the tip as to not get too many details in. For 2019, I really wanted to start drawing more drawings that had backgrounds in them. Just like this one, it doesn't have to be elaborate, it can also be simple. Um, and also I wanted to work on some larger pieces again. Um, it's been a while since I did a really large drawing in color pencil. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm also dabbling in some airbrushing for backgrounds. So I'm very excited for that and seeing how that will work out. And at this point, I'm pretty much just jumping around all over the drawing, adding final details and making some areas darker and some areas lighter. And that's pretty much it for this drawing. Um, this was the first drawing I created using the Stedtler Mass Lumograph pencils. And I really like those and I have a review coming up of the pencils themselves with some swatches and some eraser tests and blendability tests so I'm really excited for that to come up but in general I really like these pencils and I really liked how this drawing ended up. If you'd like to see more from me you can always hit that subscribe button and if you could like the video and comment that would also be great and hopefully I'll see you again.